Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss operating lease. So the first thing we want to know is what is an operating lease? Well, it's easy. An operating lease is a lease that's not a finance lease. Well, that doesn't help me much. So what is a finance lease? Well, a finance lease is a lease that have that meet one of the five tests only one of the five tests to be a finance lease let's go ahead and review what are the five tests because we already discussed finance lease from a lessor's perspective as well as from a lessee's perspective in this session i'm going to be discussing operating lease from the lessor as well as the lessee in the same session but let's go ahead and review what a finance lease is a finance lease if it meets the the test of a transfer of ownership it means there's an agreement at the end of the agreement the product the asset will be transferred from the lessor to the lessee if the answer is yes you have a finance lease well what's the second test P purchase option it specifically we call it a bargain purchase option it means there's a good deal that the lessee would never pass out will never will never say no to well, if there is a part, if there is a purchase option, then we have a finance lease. If not, we have no finance lease. Three, the lease term. The lease term should equal to 75 or more of the economic life of the leased property. So if you lease the property for more than 75% of its economic life, then guess what? You technically purchase the, purchase the product or the asset. Therefore, you have a finance lease. Test number four. You compute the present value of the lease payment. If they're equal to or greater than 90% of the fair value of the asset, you technically purchase the asset, you have a finance lease. And the fifth test, alternative use test. What does the alternative use test mean? It means if this asset is unique to your business, simply put the lessor, there's nothing they can do with this asset once it's revered back to them. Well, if it's specialized of a specialized nature, there's no alternative use to it, then it's a finance lease. So it's a if it's a, it's a finance lease, if it meets any, any of those five options, if it fails all of them, if it fails all of them, then we have an operating lease. And obviously in this session, we're going to be dealing with an operating lease. So I told you up front, the deal that we're going to be working with will fail all these tests. Now bear in mind, operating lease will debit an asset at the commencement of the lease and will credit a liability. And this is relatively a new rule. I say relatively because I remember when I used to teach operating lease when that wasn't the case. So I always, every time I teach operating lease, I have to remind my students, although most of you don't know the old rules, but the old rules is you did not have an asset, you did not have a liability, but that's not the case anymore. When you start the lease, at the commencement of the lease, you have an asset and you have a liability. To be more specific, just like a finance lease, a finance lease, you will have an asset and you will have a liability at the commencement of the lease. However, when it comes to operating leases, you're going to see in contrast to finance lease, you're going to have only one expense rather than two. Now, the best way to illustrate this concept is to actually look at an example. So I'm going to be using the same example with a slight modification for the example that we used for a finance lease and make it fail the finance lease, turn it into an operating lease. Assume Boeing Capital Corporation, a subsidiary of, subsidiary of Boeing and Delta Airlines, signs a non-cancellable three-year lease agreement. It's non-cancellable. It's important dated January 1st, 20X1, that calls for Boeing to lease a mobile airplane ladder, I'm going to call it a ladder, to Delta beginning January 1st, 20X1. Here's the deal. So you need to know what the deal is. Cost and fair value of the ladder is 60000 So this is the fair value. The estimated economic life of the ladder is five years. And guaranteed residual value at the end of the lease is 12000 Simply put, Delta will give back the lease to the uh, to, uh, to, to uh, Boeing and there's an unguaranteed it's mean they, they're not responsible for anything but they think it's going to be worth 12,000 no renewable option the ladder reverts back to Boeing at the end of the lease and the implicit rate is for Boeing is six percent which which we know so let's go over the test is there a transfer of ownership there's no transfer of ownership if you look at the deal it doesn't say the ownership transfer to Delta is there a bargain purchase option I don't see a bargain purchase option what about the lease term? Well, the lease term is three years. 
the life of the lease, the life of the asset is five. If you take three divided by five, that's 60%. That's less 75%. We failed this. What about the present value of the lease payment? Is it equal or greater than 90% of the fair market value of the asset? Well, I need to compute my payment, which is I don't know yet. I need to compute my payment. Is there an alternative use test? Of course, Boeing can take this ladder and do what? Lease it to another airline company so they can use it. So the, so it also failed this test. So there is an alternative use test, alternative use for this asset. The only thing that we need to know now is the present value of the lease payment. Now, we already know up front we're going we're, we're, we're gonna to fail this test, but nevertheless, we have to learn how to compute the present value of the payment. Actually, we don't have the payment itself, so we need to compute the payment, compute the present value, and the fair value, we know it's 60,000, compare the present value of the payment versus the 60,000. Now, before we look at the present value of the payment, most likely you are an accounting student or a CPA candidate looking to learn about operating leases. That's a great. You have arrived. I can help you. I provide you with lectures, multiple choice, true, false, additional resources. That's going to help you on my website, farhatlectures.com. I don't replace your CPA review course. I don't re replace your accounting course. The reason you are watching me right now, it's because you are looking for operating leases and you did find me. That's great. You are in the right place. Go a step further. Take a look at my um, material. Subscribe. It will help you tremendously. Connect with me on Instagram if you haven't done so. Like this recording. Share it with others. If, it, if, if it's benefiting you, it might benefit other people. Connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. Let's compute the payment first. Well, how do we compute the payment? We're going to take the fair value of the letter, which is 60000 minus the present value of the residual value. Or the, not the residual value, the guaranteed residual value or unguaranteed, it doesn't matter. We deduct the present value. And that's gonna give us $10,075.44. And this is basically, we're looking at N equal to three, I equal to 6% using the period and the rate that we used. And this is the present value of a single payment. Hopefully you are familiar with the time value. Otherwise, if not, go to Farhat Lectures and learn about your time value of money. At this point, we, the assumption is you know how to use the present value tables. That's going to give you the amount to be recovered from the payment, 49,924. We're going to take 49,924 divided by 2.8333. This, this is going to be a present value annuity due because the first payment in this deal will be due immediately. So the, the first payment will be due immediately and that's, that's why I multiplied by this rate. This is I equal to 6, I equal to 6%, and equal to 3, the present value of an annuity do not ordinary annuity so the payment will be seventeen thousand six hundred twenty dollars and eight cent now we already know the present value of the payment forty nine thousand nine twenty four divided by sixty thousand the it's eighty three percent eighty three percent is less than ninety percent so also we failed the present value uh, the ninety percent test therefore we failed all five finance lease tests what are we looking at here we are looking at an operating lease well, if we're looking at an operating lease, let's go ahead and start to look at the journal entry for a lessee first. So the lessee is Delta Airlines, which is basically the rentor of the of the ladder. On January 1st, 20X1, what's going to happen is they are going to debit an asset, as I told you, an operating leases. We're going to debit the asset for the present value that we computed, 49,924.56, and they're going to have a lease liability for 49,924.56. Also, on the same day, they're going to make their first payment. Well, the payment is $17,620.50. Five pennies. We debit the lease liability immediately. There's no, nothing to do because it's the same date. There's no interest component yet. And we credit cash for that amount. Now, also for an operating lease, we're going to prepare an amortization schedule. And this is what the amortization schedule would look like. We have the date, annual lease payment, interest on the liability, reduction of the liability, and the lease liability. The lease liability started at this amount, 49925 Then immediately the same day, we made the payment. Therefore, the lease liability is down to 32305 Now, on the CPA exam, they might ask you, what is the balance of the lease liability after the payment? Well, the balance is 32305 or they might ask you, what is the balance two years, which is a year later? Well, we're going to see what the balance is a year later after you make the second payment. But the point is you need to know how to read and sometime actually create 
those amortization schedule maybe in a simulation so make sure you know how to read them interpret them you know how to extract the information from them and how to build one from scratch okay so what would the entry looks like December 31st 20x1 after the first year went by well guess what we're gonna be crediting return uh, right of of use asset we're not gonna have an, an amortization expense okay we're gonna have only one expense that we're gonna have only one expense and we're not gonna say whether it's amortization or interest it's gonna be included in both so a year later here's here's what's gonna happen at the end of the first year we're gonna debit lease expense for this amount 17,620.08 we're going to credit lease liability for this amount $1,938.33 and this is basically the interest component so this is technically the interest although we don't call it interest we don't call interest expense in an operating lease listen to me carefully there's no interest expense there is no amortization expense the term is lease expense and it's only one expense and the reason I'm emphasizing this it's because you already saw the finance lease, which is treated differently. So under operating lease, there's no interest expense. There is no amortization expense. Okay. And this is basically part of the new deal is because they don't want you to treat it as you have interest and amortization. Then it's technically like a lease expense. Okay. So that's, that's why it's an operating expense. Then we credit right of use asset for the basically principal and basically this amount is the plug which is this amount here the principal amount and it's going to reduce your 32,305 to 16,623 and that's going to be your balance in year two and this is usually what they ask on the CPA exam what is the balance after the first year well that's the balance that's the balance of the liability then you are going to pay off the liability by debiting the 17,620,205 minus not minus and credit cash to remove the liability to remove the liability the, this lease liability represent the interest component which is the 1938 and the principal component which we said it's going against the against the amortization you plus the principal so this the lease liability is reducing both now remember notice what we did we did one expense one expense and that expense include both interest in quote interest and amortization but it's only one expense now what's going to happen a year later for December 31st 20x2 actually this is this should be x2 so December 31st at the end of x2 we'll do the same thing we are going to debit an expense for this much credit lease liability for this portion here for the technical interest technically the interest and the remainder will be toward the principal then we pay off the liability now let now let's take a look at this transaction from the lessor's perspective which is Boeing the lessor the good news is will classify the lease as an operating lease just like the lessee so there is no different rules for the lessee and the lessor it's an operating lease for the lessee an operating lease for the lessor what does that mean it means the lessor will keep the asset on the balance sheet and recognize revenue in each period why because I did not really make the sale this is only a rental agreement although the lessee have an asset called right of use asset but I am keeping the asset if I'm keeping the asset I also have to depreciate the asset this is not a sale agreement an operating lease is not a sale agreement it's a rental agreement it's a rental not a sale therefore the lessor is keeping the asset and they would recognize revenue as simple as that now what's going to happen when we sign the lease when we sign the lease automatically Delta wrote a check for 17,620 we're gonna debit cash credit unearned revenue so from Boeing's perspective we did not really earn any money because we just signed the lease we're gonna have to wait until they start to use the asset December 31st 20x1 a year went by what's gonna happen is we're gonna reverse this unearned revenue now we earned the revenue and we're gonna credit lease revenue for 17,620 and we're gonna do this basically again at the beginning of 20x2 we will have unearned revenue when we get the money then we'll have at the end of the year reverse it and make it into earn revenue so this process would repeat itself for the next three years now are we done yet not yet the lessor also would, de would depreciate the asset over five years now you're saying the lease is three I don't care about the lease the lessor own the asset they own the asset for five years therefore they will depreciate the asset and for the sake of this illustration they're going to be using the straight line method so they're going to take 60,000 divided by five and they're going to depreciate the asset over the next five years at twelve thousand dollar per year they could use any depreciation method it doesn't matter I happen to use the straight line 
What should you do now? To learn more about operating leases, go to farhatlectures.com and work MCQs through faults and exercises. That's going to help you reinforce what you have learned. Yes, it's great that you learn it, but what's important is to practice what you have learned. So to test your knowledge. If you're not a subscriber, subscribe. It's very important that you invest in your in your career, invest in your accounting knowledge, invest for your CPA. Don't shortchange yourself. You are making an investment for the future. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.